Hi, hopefully everybody's been having a good week. So today I'm going to be going over learning outcome number three, which is explain the advantages and limitations of criterion reference tests. So just to quickly recap, criterion reference tests are different from normative reference tests because they are usually standards that are set for everybody and they're heavily researched, which means that they're very valid. Um, so the advantages of criterion reference tests are that they're linked to meaningful criterion, which again means that they're very valid. Um, and they also don't depend on the characteristics of the sample that you measured. So even, even if you test one person, um, the outcome is always going to be the same. If you test a group of people, their outcome is always going to be the same. Um, it's not depending on your sample size. It's uh, a standard that's created um, that's going to measure everybody and it's going to treat everybody equally, pretty much. Um, and another advantage is that it can be used to guide improvement. Um, so one of the biggest examples of criterion reference tests is BMI. So BMI can also be used to guide improvement because it's going to be a consistent result and it's going to basically tell you exactly what, um, what you're looking for every single time. But the limitations of criterion reference tests are that um, creating these categories and cutoffs does involve some subjective, subjective judgment um, and misclassification can also have serious consequences. So let's say if you were an athlete that was big and tall and you got a BMI test and your doctor said that you were grossly overweight, um, that might like affect you and you, you might have taken it the wrong way, but in reality, um, the test didn't apply to you. Um, and that, that also comes with a risk of limiting improvement and discouraging some individuals um, because they are not able to fall into these categories. Um, so it might end up discouraging them from furthering their improvement. So yeah.